So let's do this. Let's go in here. Introduce us some players. We're going to start up to the top left-hand side of the map with our red Terran player. Obviously had a pretty insane run at Katowice. Let's see how he does in this best of three against someone else who had a pretty insane run as well. TVP, once again. We'll switch up matchups after this. We'll try and get something with a Zerg involved. We might just take the highest voted for matchup that has a Zerg in it just to be a bit different, whatever. But to the top left-hand side, the red Terran player. It's alive. Bottom right hand side, Blue Protoss from Splice. Give it up for stats. What's up, Dan Shrine in the chat? How's it going? What's up? Well, I'm just casting some StarCraft 2. What's up with you? Do let me know what's up with yourselves, guys. Always, I mean, I know I say this a lot every single stream, but I am interested. I want to talk to you guys. Especially in the early stages of these games where it looks as though, especially with this gas cancelling. It looks as though we're just going to have a very standard expansion base play from either player. It's always fun to hear what you guys have to say and uh, just to hear what's going on and what's happening, you know. So let me know what's up. Let me know what's what's good and let me know how you'll feel and if you've got anything fun planned for the weekend or if you've had a really shit week, if maybe next week something exciting is happening. I want to hear from you all. So get in touch. Type it in the chat. Maybe you're at work and lurking right now. In which case, you can secretly type in the chat very quietly so no one hears you. And see this uh, CC will be put down just a little bit out of position due to this probe. So that's a little bit uh, a little bit of a nuisance right there. I mean, for a seven player, lifting your CC and repositioning it isn't exactly the end of the world, though. So that's, uh, that's pretty neat. Just uh, starts a little bit annoying. I'm going to save this probe to the right-hand side. You would imagine that this probe is probably going to come forwards and try to put down a pylon or so towards the front. So, we may try and uh, pylon rush a little bit, but we saw that actually out of Showtime on Proxima Station. Euphemia shut it down instantly. But he didn't send his Reaper across the map as Alive is doing right here, so... We'll see how this goes. He comes across. He might see the Mothership Core coming out or something. He might see it moving across. Well, I guess we'll figure out in a moment or two. Jumps into the main base for now. A couple of shots, and then just backs away. And uh, goes uh, towards the center once again. So Ruby just continues to move around. Jables23 in the chat, having a great day off. Seeing your boy alive kick butt. Brackets, hopefully. Ah, good to hear, man. See the pylons coming down, though, so he's going to have to kick some pylon butt first if he's going to kick butt in general this game. And uh, he set this up and looked to see. What's going to happen? And guys, again, this is, of course, not live because, you know, <laughs> it's replays from IEM Katowice. It sort of happened like last week, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, we're not live right now, which is why you're live probably is streaming right now and why he's not playing live in this. we just bring you guys some games. I mean, I've got nothing else to cast today, so may as well cast some replays if they didn't get cast elsewhere and so on. May as well do something, right? Better than casting nothing. That's my opinion on it. You see this uh, ah, Mothership Core doing a bit more damage to that fire depot. Depot does fall here in the end. As we're going to be seeing the... Uh, I mean, this is pretty nice, like a reactor depot kill. Definitely decent stars. Now we see the Cyclone coming in. No high ground vision, so you can start to fight that pile a little bit faster. Actually going to load up into the medevac and start going across the map. Stats has taken a very fast third nexus. Uh, so, something I learned is that a lot of players take super fast third nexuses when they see the Cyclone. So... That's kind of interesting, seeing the Cyclone, fast third nexus, maybe. Uh, I mean, you put the third nexus down pretty quickly anyways. Does kill the Mothership Core, though, and that means alive. But he still has four Marines and a Cyclone to get across the map and to do something with. Let's see, uh... Let's see what's going to happen. So, pushing forward with this Medivac unit, Cyclone does begin to unload the Marines as well, and... Well, they're going to come in towards the front, where already this pylon will start to take some damage. Shield's gone, health disappearing. Oracle comes in and does force the lift up. I mean, still forcing the Oracle to use its pulse beam back at home, use up some energy there rather than across the map. Can turn out to be uh, quite okay. And we're going to be seeing these two Marines continue to work their way through these pylons, so... Again, just getting rid of this pylon, I mean, honestly, there wasn't going to be much of a further threat from that pylon, so... If you could, you know, let it live and then get across the map more quickly and do some damage, perhaps. Uh, it's definitely a better way to go about things. It's worked out for him so far. Single Marine here will get cleaned out by this Adept, finally. And that should be... Oh my god, <laughs> so many things just moving past this marine. Finally, it gets shut down. And from there... Ah, we just see the plus one weapon starting up on the engineering base, so... Plus one starts in the engineering base, continue to tech up at this point, and then... 
I'm just looking to see from where he can go. Forge is coming down on the natural expansion. Twilight Council coming up as well, Sats. But his follow-up is looking very much so what we'd expected it to look like based on a lot of the PVT which we've been seeing as of late with this Phoenix Adept playstyle, which has just been to build a whole bunch of Phoenix, a bunch of Adepts with plus one and resonating glaives, and just sort of go from there. It's interesting that Phoenix Adept becomes so powerful, and of course this was played before the patch. Uh, Post-patch now, Phoenix Adept will be a bit stronger because of the Widowmine nerf, I uh, you would imagine at least. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, because a lot of Terran players were struggling against this quite a lot. Uh, at Katowice and, you know, just before the patch in general, so... It will continue to be interesting to see what, uh, what happens as the metagame will evolve once more with the recent patch coming into play. What if a president says barcode I? Thank you very much. Appreciate the <laughs> kind words. What's up? Hope stats wins IEM, says poorly informed. You always live up to your name, mate. Always living up to your name. You're going to see these two medivacs coming down the left hand side. As we're going to see these few Phoenix and the Oracle moving up towards the center. They're going to run into a few Marines. I think they could fight these, honestly. And we will fight these. This marine's not going to last very long at all. Although that is quite a lot of energy used on lifting up marines rather than lifting up workers, etc. So, eh, it could have been worth us. I'd rather lose seven marines than seven SCVs. As we do see the two medivacs here to the left, thinking about how they want to try and come in towards this third base. So, Widow Mines, a couple of them, going to start dropping down. Overcharge will pop, and oh, there's the Widow Mines going off. One probe going down to each of them. So, two workers killed, nothing too bad. And we're going to see the rest of this drop, which is only two Marines. Coming in, we'll try and pick off a probe or two. Gets one probe, we'll not get a second. And it will be this medevac shut down as well. So live, I mean, a lot of these Phoenix are shutting down Liberators quite nicely so far. So, I mean, there's been a lot that's kind of going pretty okay for... Uh, it's been going pretty okay for stats, I would say. He's been defending pretty, pretty swiftly in a lot of situations so far, so... It's been looking pretty nice. You can see some Widow Mines starting to unload on this right-hand side. Some Marines underneath these Medivacs as well. And you're going to see a couple of these Widow Mines just burrowing. Revelation does come down and those two Widow Mines will just, uh, well, not be used at all. Because the Phoenix is able to come in, lift one of them up. The Adepts killed the other one pretty swiftly. Well, lad will try and drop into the main, but what a veil. I mean, he's going to lose pretty much everything no matter what. As Adepts warp it in, he wasn't going to do much there. So a good shutdown by stats, honestly. Alive has just been losing so much that it's kind of crazy. Like, stats is just getting very far ahead. However, this is quite a few probes that are starting to get shut down right here, so that's kind of nice. I mean, that's something from Alive finally going his way, killing a lot of workers and stats towards the third base. I mean, finally, he kills like 10 ish workers. I mean, it's so much more than what he's gotten done so far. However, 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 he still has been losing so much army, so this attack coming across the map now might put him in a little bit of trouble. Stats will start to shade Adepts forwards. The wall is down. And so Adepts can start getting in. The units are not immediately in position. Does Stats want to commit? He will commit into the mineral line. Actually, the mineral line makes it a bit awkward because now Alive can kind of back away and you can see those Adepts sort of clumping up a little bit. But again, does it matter? Well, if you walk into a uh, Widow Mines like that, it very well might matter, I think, actually. As we see Alive continue to fight, I just don't think this is a good engagement at all from Stats. He took himself into a great position in this game. But now, he's going to lose absolutely everything. He has completely massacred this fight. This was not how it was meant to go in alive. He on Valshia Vestige, immediately you can see how confident he feels. Cleans up this attack and straight away he's going to push in towards the third base. He's going to take that for himself. Immediately loads up and starts to go across the map. Oh man, that was really just stats making so many mistakes. The initial shade in being on top of the SCVs and in the mineral line instead of on top of these units... Well, that was very painful, because then right away you could see what was going to happen. These two depots, the mineral patches, were blocking so many of those adepts from actually joining the fight. And so Live's Bio only has to fight half of the adepts. Plus the fact that Stats is flying in towards Widow Mines all over the place as well. And well, that was an absolute disaster. Now a triple drop into the main base. That's probably going to be good by main Nexus. And Stats is going to start falling into a very difficult position here. Nexus goes down a simulator as well. I mean, this Phoenix flies forward to, well... I would have thought it might have got targeted, but Alive just lifts up, going to drop over here, get away from those Phoenix once again, and still maintains a very solid position in this game. In the last two minutes or so, this really has just gone so well for Alive. So, so well. Absolutely crazy, as we have 
Well, what, what, what happens now from stats? I mean, lost his main nexus. Okay, I mean, there's not too many minerals left here. About 1,000, 1,500. But gas lost is going to be very important. I mean, an extra 1,500 gas is so many units. At the same time, now we see Weirdo Mines burrowing, picking up a lot of kills over towards the third nexus as well. So more damage still being done. And Depth Shade and Fords will force these Menazaks to lift, boost to the side. Smart little plays by Alive always boosting towards other ledges where the Adepts can't get to as quickly so that he can just dodge away from the Phoenix and unload ASAP to actually be able to fight those Phoenix. Scan comes down and Observer falls and that's going to be another dead Nexus right here and Alive. Well, he turned this game around so quickly here in game number one. Widowmines are going to start going off and oh, hits the sentries as well. Disastrous play for Stats. After the first six, seven minutes, the Stats were amazing. But then the last two or three just have been the complete opposite of Mazen. Terrible. Horrible. Not the sort of stats play we expect. The large Artosis pile on here will probably go down, and that will be a lot of these gateways empowered the Stargate to GG for stats alive. We'll pick up game number one. What a game by Alive again. I mean, arguably, stats is on mistakes. It's kind of a weird one. I wouldn't say Alive did cross spawns on undergrounds. We just saw TVP on this position. Or on these positions between Showtime and Euphermal, which, well, it was a very interesting game. Euphermal was actually a lot more aggressive than I think you would expect a player to be on crossbone on a grounds with that initial contain he got set up, killing the third Nexus, for example. I wonder how a live approach is on the grounds. I wonder if he goes CC first, you know, change things up on a map with a two base, uh, you know, if the in base natural, I should say, allows you to go up to two bases super quickly, super safely. He's actually going to go gas first. Probably just gas first, Reaper expand then. As we have to the bottom right hand side, the Red Terran player. Amazingly still teamless. It is alive. Top left hand side of the map. Uh, blue Protoss player from Splice. Let's see how he can do as he has stats to the top left hand side. Stats going to be playing for us tomorrow in the Wardy TV Weekly Season 1 Finals. So uh, that's going to be happening tomorrow. Stats against Hero is actually our opening match of the day. Then Stats versus Jachi, Stats versus Snoot. Followed by, I think, Hero versus Jachi, Hero versus Snoot, Snoot versus Jachi is our match order for the day. So we'll be determining two more players to join us in the playoffs, which will be played on Monday. Players such as Dark, Beyond, Innovation, S uh, Sue. Gumiho and Sola already in the playoffs in the round of eight. So they're already there. They'll be joined by two more tomorrow. Make sure you tune in midday CET. It's about 15 and a half hours from now, if I can math correctly. It's at 11 a.m. for me, so three and a half plus 12, 15 and a half, boom. Math. Not just math. I not only just did math on the stream, I did clocks on the stream. Literally a god right now. What can go wrong if you do math and clocks correct on stream? Amazing. And across multiple time zones. Literally killing it. So make sure you check that out tomorrow, guys. It's going to be live right here. It's going to be a great day of games. And if you've got tomorrow evening free, you don't really know what's going on and you've got not much to do, we're not going to be streaming StarCraft, but we're going to be streaming a new game called Drop Zone, and it's kind of an RTS MOBA mix, and it's going to be my first time casting it as we run the Wardy TV Drop Zone Cup number one. So we're going to be doing that tomorrow evening. If you have a few minutes, drop in, check it out. I mean, it's going to be my first time casting it, so I'm going to cast in a fairly kind of uh, new player-friendly sort of way, right? So come check it out, answer any of your questions about the game and stuff. And I've been loving playing it, so I'm really excited to actually cast it a little bit and see how the event goes. So it's going to be tomorrow from 7 p.m. CET. So I'm getting a busy day for us tomorrow, but not just StarCraft on the agenda. Now we do see a Stargate on the way up from stats once again. I mean, it's just the go-to right now in PvT matchups. So, we're setting up into that. We're going to be seeing a few Marines just sort of continue to come up from alive. This actually wasn't just one gas into Reaper Expand. No, this was double gas very early on. So, a super fast Widow Mine drop into a Cyclone here. Going to be an interesting way to get things going for a Terran player in these first few moments. I imagine the Medivac will lift the Widow Mine and the Marines. I guess the Cyclone will just run across the map to see if it can find any opportunities. So, Marines loading up there, six of them with the Medivac and uh, Riddermine. And across the map they go, Fitz. Nexus comes down pretty early once again from stats. 
So setting up the third Nexus once again pretty swiftly. You're going to see the Mothership Core just coming in very late for him. But still will be out in time to drop an overcharge against the Medivac. Or will it? It's going to be pretty close. I think it'll pop at the very latest. I think it pops when the Medivac is unloading. So I don't think it's too bad. It's very, it was very close though. You can see it's going to pop just as the Medivac starts to unload. Now that, my friends, is called good timing. However, wouldn't mind will unload here in Marines too. We'll start to work their way for a couple of deaths. What mind goes off on the Mothership Core. He'll just turn around and kill that instantly. And then he actually unburrowed the Widowmine, but decides to burrow it once again. It means he's going to start uh, dropping off again, and it looks as though this uh, Medivac will maybe go down. He's going to lift him back away, drop the Marines off where they can't be fought against the Adas. However, he stopped moving with the Medivac, and the Medivac will fall. No, stays alive as does the Phoenix. Crazy couple of moments between these two players. A little bit of a micro war very early in the day. I mean, alive, though, hasn't really done the damage he needs to with this opening. This was super aggressive, where, you know, in the sense that, you know, he really had a lot kind of committed to this, right? I mean, he's been one base for so long, his CC on the natural has only just finished, it's only just now morphing into an orbital. So he's sat like 13 workers behind because he just didn't find the damage he needed to with this opening so far. So Alive falling behind early. His build just, again, I mean, it's not like he played it badly or anything, it's just stats defended well, and so... With this build, if you don't do damage, you don't end up in the best of positions. 15 workers down. Let's see if stats can play this out nicely to try and even up the series then. Twilight and the Forge, both just over about halfway done. So again, we're seeing that very typical sort of trio of structures early in the game. With the Phoenix and the Stargate into the Forge for the plus one. The Twilight Council for the Resonating Glaives. And just looking to play out from there. So setting up into that, we're going to be seeing plus one. Actually, uh... Starting there, and there's the Resonant Glaives. I don't know why it sounded so surprised when I said that, because I just explained exactly that, that was <laughs> that's what we're going to be seeing. Uh, I don't know why I, uh, I, I don't know, my mind just uh, slipping there momentarily. Yeah, a bunch more gateways coming down, obviously stats and free bases, so he's just setting up into his free base production. 58 workers against 37 SCVs. I don't really know what Alive does to realistically, like, stay alive against this. No pun intended, but... I was going to make another bad pun. I was going to say the stats say he should die soon. But that would be too terrible after uh, making a unintentional live pun too. Man, so many of the Korean players have ideas you can uh, make pretty uh, pretty sick puns with. I'm not a very punny kind of guy though. I just, uh, I just uh, see how it rolls, you know? Go with it as it comes and usually puns don't come to me so I just don't use them. I just tell you guys the download, just give you all the download, just let you know what's happened. A little bit of speculation on the side. A bit of an interesting fight in the middle here, setting up right now from Alive. I mean, two Widowmines and the Medivac, 10 ish Marines. Mm, it's not really that many to do too much with. I guess he's actually got 12 Marines, so he can lift up perfectly into the two Medivacs. That doesn't matter if the Phoenix are going to be able to chase him down, though, so I'm a little bit concerned about this right now. However, not spotted so far. He's made it all the way up towards the upper left side, towards the gold base, which stats is most likely to take in the near future. Dropping towards the main base too at the same time, so a little bit more prone aggression, just harassing around, and well, alive just keeping it away as now he drops in towards the main base as well. So here we go. Why does he have a Widowmine go? Oh, he's got both of them here. They're both just sat underneath. Revelation drops down. Phoenix in the depths here. Uh oh, ah, he left some up because he's got Revelation down. He shuts this down nicely. The drop in the main doesn't do too much more other than denying mining time. I'm just going to see more marines just unloading towards the center. Fit CC is up from alive though, so he's got that to work with now. Again, I just worry that he's been behind so much throughout the game already. I mean, we don't have WCS game heart on, on this uh, replay, but I'm sure if we checked it right now, stats would have been very far ahead on the income tab uh, throughout the entire game on the income graph, so... Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. We're going to see these Phoenix helping to shut down a Medivac right there. And now they're going to come in down through the center of the map. More depths to the left. Starts looking to see what he can do with these in the next few moments. As I guess he just goes for the larger attack. I mean, set this right side, set this right sort of timing, right? Where Alive is taking his third base, and as he takes his third base, that's when he's a bit more open to these attacks doing damage. So we'll see if Stats can make something happen against it. Taking it behind this, plus one armor, the blink upgrade as well. Templar Archives coming down even. So looking to maybe go in towards a very fast storm as a follow-up this time around. Stats should be a bit cautious though, right? I mean, last game went completely wrong because he really overcommitted to a fight that 
just wasn't good for him, even though he was ahead. So now, ahead again, does he commit to this fight? Well, it looks as though he does pulls away from the initial Widowmines to minimize the splash damage. That's very important. The Phoenix hanging back for now as well, waiting for a top chance to really come forward to and do something special. He's killed one Debo to the top side, which means the Adept Shade forwards, though. And that is the opportunity now, I think, for the Phoenix to come in. Dead, Liberators most likely, as the Liberators go down. Medivax will follow. Doesn't need to lift the Widowmines just yet because they've already gone off. Now you can just see that stats, I think, has a bit too much. Marauders keep dropping. Wither mines go down up on the main base, but reinforcers are going down too. The Liberators are shot down. This Phoenix here to lift up units and whatever else, and I think the reality is there's just going to be a bit too much from stats. GG called by alive, and the game goes the way of our Protoss player. And so let's go into this game and introduce our players. And uh, well, let's see where Cactus Valley is going to take us. To the bottom left-hand side, the Red Terran player. Give it up for alive. And to the top left-hand side, the blue Protoss player, it is Stats. Now, as you're all in the chat applauding our players, cheering them on, even though it's from replays, keep them cheers going on. Lom La Lay. It's a fun name to say, Lom La Lay. Thank you very much for subscribing. Here's some SSI hearts in the chat, please, if we've got any subs around. If you aren't a sub, then just throw in some normal hearts. Works just as well. Thank you very much for the sub, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for the support. I think that puts us back on 180 subscribers, which is pretty sick. Honestly, February was such a crap month for us. Um, and then I went away for, to Katowice for a week. I'm really surprised we're above 170 subs, never mind climbing back up to 180. And we're all back to the road to 200 all over again. But uh, getting back onto that and uh, get back to 200. I think our real goal right now is 250 subs. Get to 250. Let's see where we can go from that point on. But that'd be... Uh, that's what we're aiming for the next couple of months. I believe we can do it. We can do it if we work together, work hard, put out some great content and all the rest of it, you know? I believe in us, so... Thumbs up. Too many options on the straw poll. That, that's great because it means you can just vote for as many games as you like. That's the whole point. You can literally vote as many times as you like. You could vote for every single game on there if you wanted to. Wouldn't have much of an effect, but... If that's how excited you are to see all of the games, then there you go. That's that's something you could do. I'm surprised like uh, Snoop Ryong isn't higher up. That's something I was wondering to cast. Uh, Dark Gummyho is very low down as well today. It's actually on top of the other day, but I didn't want to cast it because <laughs> I get the feeling it's a very long series. And I didn't fancy casting some mech games the other day. And I don't know if I can uh, cast any super long series today because <clears throat> I do have... A little bit of a funny throat, and we're going to be casting a lot over the weekend, so I do want to try and take care of it and not, you know, cast endlessly. Which is why we might only do three, four hours of streaming tonight rather than the six hours that we did when we did IEM replays the other day, so... We'll see, we'll see. And so now we just set on up and look to see... Look to see what's going to be happening, really. Nothing too intense so far here on Cactus Valley. I'm going to see, actually, kind of interesting from alive. Super fast second and third racks, so... Just going into this right away is going to allow him to, well, just have lots more bio on the map than you might expect. You don't see free racks, open, free racks openings a lot anymore. And actually, while we're talking about that, Stats is starting to get very aggressive himself. This CC is going to be delayed. Pylon is building Adept and a Zealot swiping away on it. He might even look for the kill. Another SCV will come in, will try and help to get some more time on this build. I mean, how close is it? 68 over 71. He's a few seconds away. The last thing Alive wants to do is to have to cancel the CC. But it's starting to go in that direction right now. Like, he actually might just have to cancel this. Right? Oh, wow. Well, that's a huge loss for Alive. Stats picking up the kill in the command center. I mean, the plus side for Alive is that this pylon isn't close enough to kill his barracks or his reactor. <laughs> but, I mean... I, I, I mean, losing the CC, man. That's absolutely insane. I mean, yes, it wasn't quite finished. He doesn't lose all the minerals. He loses 100 minerals, but losing the build time, 68 seconds of build time, is absolutely insanity. So that's going to be stats from my perspective in a great position right from the get-go here. Reaper across the map has picked up three kills in the meantime, though. So, well, for what Alive has lost out on, at least he's getting some sort of value back from the Reaper. He's going to start pushing with Marines as well. And, well, stats does start up a pile on here. I wonder if the Mothership Corps is just so far out of position if he just doesn't expect an attack this early. I wonder if there's an opportunity for Alive to do some pretty major damage of his own, because this is a lot of Marines. This isn't many units just yet from stats either, so... 
There is a little bit of potential right here. There's some opportunity, I would say, as these Marines start to come across the map, getting ready to go in towards this natural expansion. I mean, what, 11 Marines? Two Adepts and a Zealot right now. Pylon at the front. Membership Core is not in range, though. Membership Core will not defend this Pylon, I don't think. Stalker does come in as well. He's just going to step forward. I mean, he could just go past the Pylon at this point, too. He doesn't even have to kill it. And Adept going down as well. And right here, we are seeing damage being done. Alive will start picking his way through some of these probes. And Overcharge comes down. A few more Marines just pull away. Not too much damage done, but hey, it's still a little bit of something. Killing out a few of these units. Picking off a few probes as well. At the same time in the main base, not sure what went down there. The Reaper, I think. Yeah, just the Reaper going down. As the Marines do get cleaned out. All right, so Marines get cleaned out. Hmm. How interesting, then. What, what sort of situation do we end up in? Because this is still not an orbital command, but he is four workers ahead. So, it's a tough one to call. How many probes did he kill? Eleven? Ah, that's insane. You can see the difference. I like, imagine the stats right now had 11 more workers still. 41 to 33. Yeah, that's insane. This attack did a lot from alive. It did enough to... I'm not sure if the game is completely equal now or what, but it feels as though he did enough to get into an okay spot to play forwards from, you know? It doesn't feel as though he's just sort of dead right now anymore. It feels as though alive has some chances, has some opportunities, so... See how this goes. Robo Bay is on the way down from stats. In the meanwhile, a fast Robo Bay like this oftentimes does just mean a very fast wall prism, a fast gravitic drive, and disruptor drops. So let's see if that's something he goes towards. However, that said, he doesn't have the prism out already, so he would be a bit slow on his disruptor coming out here. And as we see alive, well, obviously he did have the early three racks, which means he's got a lot of bio units all over again. Plus one about to finish, stim pack about to finish too, and so this army that's marching across the map is actually very powerful. And Alive has a lot of potential with this here. So here we go, moving up towards the upper left-hand side. Alive with so much opportunity at this point to just stim in, kill a pylon, kill sentries. I mean, at the same time, a couple of sentries and force fields could change this quickly. And Alive will be spotted by the Observer of Stats. So he should be able to pop this down however he wants to. There's a couple of force fields. Mm, pylon will still go down, though. Second pylon overcharge. He'll target this one down, too. Marines, still a lot of them, and the sentries will now begin to fall. There isn't enough gateway units. No pylons on the low ground within range of a nexus, so war pins are slow down here. And stats is actually just found going in towards a Colossus. Probes going down all over again, and stats is going to lose out on so much more here once more. You're going to see these Marines still gathering together. Going to get rid of one of death, starting to split these uh, Marines up a little bit. Actually going to run away with a few of them. Hey, keeping six Marines alive rather than just losing them is valuable. I mean, he maybe could have got a sentry kill, but... Probably the safer option to just run away. A death will actually be turned on, and he will kill a marine or two or three. And then Stalker killing a marine as well. A death goes down at least. I mean, alive again. How many workers is that now? 28 kills. So many probes going down. Alive continues to push himself into a better and better position at this point of the game. One last marine just going to hide to the top side. Now Medivac is about to pop out as well, so just in case Alive wasn't being annoying enough already, there's going to be now Medivac's employee as well. We're going to see this Colossus is about halfway done from stats, so when the Colossus is being about halfway done a second one, he is starting to get a bit of a better army. But I do just worry, he's down on upgrades, he's about to be down an entire set of upgrades. 1-1 one, one against 0-0 zero, zero in a few moments' time. Two Colossus are nice, but with the mobility the Medivacs give Alive as well, I just wonder if it's going to be too much. I wonder if Stats has already lost too many units to start to recover in this game. Mothership Core is going to be, well, it's not even alive right now, so there's not actually an MSC on the map to use overcharges anywhere. This is going to be really, really difficult as we see these two medevacs. Well, they're going to start unloading towards the main base. Marauders, Marines, starting to work their way through this pylon. So pylon goes down. Life does move one Marauder forward. It's actually going to see these two medevacs going to lift up once again, and well, Live is still just uh, getting ready to keep pushing forwards and uh, looking to see what he can do. So, two medivacs from Alive still to the far left hand side, and I mean, at the same time, he just pushes into the natural. This is what I mean. How does stats defend multiple locations? Well, at the moment, he kind of doesn't. Pylon goes down, sentry falls instantly, and now the probes are very open to attack. I love that. Stims just two marines behind the mineral line to keep working on probes while well, he keeps the majority of his units away. Well, you presume there's probably going to be enough units very shortly to deal with those. And now he knows there's units out of position. He thinks about dropping on top. Maybe he doesn't decide to. Maybe just brings everything towards the natural expansion to attack all at once. Two Colossi will go down. He has the Colossi fall. Probes get pulled in. They get massacred. 
<coughs> excuse me, one loss is left over is not going to make the difference. Unfortunately for Stats, and Live will pick up this series. Two games to one. Um, bit of a missed target there. He's trying to target fire down the center. He's being said missed them. It was just attack moving forwards. I mean, Alive has turned away once more, but more units ready to go and Stats. Not in a pretty spot at all. 20 workers down, down in upgrade still. One Colossus is all that stands for him, really. And that's going to be GG. Stats picks up game number three. Sorry, Alive picks up game number three, and he's going to win the series two games to one. That's your dog barking? I thought it was mine. There wasn't a dog barking. I coughed. Did you think my cough was the dog barking? <laughs>